ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today, we're in Ames, Iowa, reviving a 1977 Dodge D-150 Adventurer. But I'm not alone. I have Dylan McCool and Vice Grip Garage with me today. <laughs> I brought these guys here for a very specific reason. One, Dylan, if you do not know who this is, is the king of Mopars here on YouTube. Well, at least these trucks. You know way more about these than I do. And Derek from Vice Grip Garage is a huge boat nerd. Which brings me to the second point of today's revival. Attached to this truck for the last 12 years sitting right here abandoned is a boat. Where I come in is that boat in the back has a small block Ford in it. So between the three of us, we should be able to make this pile of garbage behind us run. We're gonna have a lot of wind and a lot of trains driving by today, so bear with us. I'm sure the audio is a mess. Sorry, Kevin, in post. Christopher Cool, tell us what we're looking at here today. So we've got a 1977 Dodge D-150, and the best way you can tell that this is a 77 is the fact that these are clear, where the 78s would be amber. So an interesting little thing for the, uh, the Dodge guys, if you know these trucks, you know that this is a very rare and hard to find piece because this is a two year only option. Every other year of this truck, you'd have marker lights right here. That's good. So we've got a really nice grill, nice bumpers uh, under the hood. We've got what I'm assuming to be a 360. It's a two barrel. We've got everything basically untouched. It's a factory AC truck. Uh, we've got power steering, power brakes, and cruise control. So there's a lot of really good parts here. Everything's still there. Uh, it looks like the wiring is mostly relatively untouched besides what we've got going on over here. But uh, even down to like the fan shroud, the radiator, everything is here. So I think we can make this at least run for the most part. We'll be able to uh, check the oil in it, make sure the engine's not locked up or anything like that. Uh, you know, make sure that everything looks good throw a battery, some gas in it, and see if she'll break the life. So the adventure package, was that what gave you, was that like the top of the line? Pretty much, I mean you get like trim package on the inside, you get the fancy wood grain on the door panels, on the dash, mm. uh, it's, it's a lot of just fancy extra stuff, nothing really exceptional, but. You don't need all this fancy stuff. No, it's, it's, it's basically good. just plastic wood trim. I mean, I think it'll be a really interesting video to see this thing run, it's it's all there, so that's, that's a plus. My favorite part is the um, turbo action tire on the front. This is a Minnesota car. Uh, it has been sitting since 2008, according to these tags. We'll look around inside so we can find some papers that verify how long it's been sitting. Overall, it looks like like nothing's rusted out. The brake lines are all still there. I bet this thing pretty much kicks off and goes. We'll see. The hard part of today's video is going to be what's attached to the back. Let's go check it out. All right, so we got a 77 Cobalt and uh, slide down here. She was made in the good U.S. of A, as you can see from this guy right here. I have no idea what a Cobalt is, but she was number nine in the fleet. Uh, we got a Ford 302 on pulled. It's the first time I've seen a Ford engine not look backwards at something. The distributor's finally away from the water, so that's good. And back here, we'll check out the drive. She's got a... What is it? She's a Mercruiser 888, which is just some made up number. But that's better than an OMC, which is just short for on my credit card. They don't work very good. She's had some work pad and I don't know. We got a prop. Maybe. So anyway. This will probably have to come off later, but oh wow, she's got a nice ladder on her. Oh, oh, never mind. That's broken. We got a racing steering wheel, some sort of fish finder, and I have no idea what all of those switches do. That is obscene. There's probably 39 of them. Uh, I'm going to guess this boat probably does a good 32, maybe 49 miles an hour, but most likely 27. Looks like she was registered in, I think that's the year in Iowa, so 2010? Yeah, I think it's, it would have expired in 10, so it could have been before that maybe? It kind of makes sense. I think you expect it's like three years in Iowa. Yeah, so probably seven, eight or seven, eight or seven. Yeah. So these are probably parked together. The interior is meant in this thing. I mean, this just needs a little bit of armor all. 
and it'll come around. I think you got a cooler up here. Yeah, see, you put your anchors and whatever. Well, help me understand how to get this out. That's still good. It smells so bad. I think that's all we got in there. These don't lift up, normally they do. But I mean, it's a good boat. I think it just needs a wash. The Ford will start, they always do. It's even got some cutty doors here. Did you see the plant growing in there? In the ski box? I'm gonna name that Herbert, I think. This feels right. I'm gonna guess that she's probably got more holes in her than a chain link fence, but she might float. Probably not. The frame and the bed are not on speaking terms. Oh, it's like old band-aids and cardboard. <coughs> it's really bad. We'll just let that air out. Hey Dylan, is this factory uh, camper lighting or is this an add-on to the adventure Yeah, this package? is the uh, you know, redneck gig. I, can't, I live in Iowa, but I actually am from Tennessee, wiring mod. Why did they cut it right? Okay, well, I think it looks nice. So Kevin's gonna go grab a battery for us real quick. Basically, we wanna make sure that this thing is not stuck. Because we start cranking on that starter with a stuck engine, things will go wrong. There you are, sir. One battery. I'm not gonna hook that up, that's dangerous. Uh, well, an awful sense. You think so? Oh, yeah. What could go wrong? I'll smell for fire. Go ahead. We're going to see if any kind of lights come on. Do we bring the keys? They're in the ignition. Oh, okay. Hey, I got headlights. Yeah. Park. Everything. Wow. Park light. I bet the blinkers work. Show you what. We'll try it. Got a blinker? No. Oh yeah, well, yeah, I got a right blinker. Yeah, a left blinker. Dude, we can just drive this to lunch with the boat. I realize now how long this setup is. That's like 30 feet <laughs> at the end of the boat. You can move their hydraulic brake oh, box wow. there. We might have brakes. Is that a first? I'm driving this back home. So before we tap the key or cross the solenoid or whatever we're gonna end up doing. We want to get our air cleaner off for the first time since, since before cries. Make sure there's no mouse poop in there. There we go. Oh, yuck, a two barrel. So generally, if you can move your throttle, yeah, we can. Feels good. Felt like I almost had an accelerator pump for a second. What uh, what does this stuff do? It's a good question. Feel like I don't know. Spaceship, some alien stuff up here. Choke dehydrator. Generally, if you can move your car, there's no moisture that's gotten at least this far into the engine and things spin over. With that being said, you never know if this thing is blown up and seized and parked. So, I say we tap a key and see what happens. Is there anybody more capable than in here? Uh, we need an adult. Oh, hey. dry. That's a good sign. Did we bring water? Derek had a jug, but I think he drank it We all. could empty the beer cooler into there. All right, I'm going to tap the key. Ready? Yeah. Nice. Uh, oil dipstick, anyone? Right here. Oh. Well, I would have never found that. <laughs> I was looking over here. Well, there's oil. There's plenty of oil. How gassy does oh, it smell? The kind of, but not too bad. Derek, do you want to lick it? Yep. Bring it over here. Fine. He actually licks things, like for real. Wow. There, there is a little bit of gas in it. He licks things off camera. I watched him do that to my the transmission dipstick on my charger. So it's just a recreational thing. Not a camera around at all. He just did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's so you good. never see these in nice condition. They're always busted. I can't believe this is so good. I know. It's even full of washer fluid. Oh, hell. The factory tie downs. This is worth the whole truck right there. This thing is just getting better and better. I bet if we hit this with brake cleaner, it'd damn near fire off. Has to, for sure. Do, we want Do you to want to disconnect the pump first, just in case it sucks up any kind of garbage yeah, in the tank? Let's pop our uh, factory fuel line off. There she goes. So 
So, Dylan, this is an electronic ignition system, right? Yes, you have your ignition box right there. there? This is your voltage regulator. You have your ignition oh. box and your balance is over there. So, we have a backup one of those because those are very prone to fail. I left them at the shop. We don't have a backup one because it's very prone to fail. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, we, we can see if it'll work first at least. Somebody has done a number on the wiring. Yeah, there's some sort of fuse missing here. I don't know what it does. Do we'll we, just pretend we didn't see it. Do we want to be smart and take the cap and rotor off and try to clean out any corrosion or just get this with brake cleaner and see what happens? Um, uh, oh, that yeah. looks... Cap's pretty clean. Pretty good. Distributor looks clean on the inside too. I'll file that clip. Yeah. So even though it's been sitting for 12 years, we're gonna guess this has been moved around. Not so much to say recently, but probably five years ago, because all the tires still have air and everything, and everything looks pretty okay. But we know it's been off the road for at least 12 years, so it could have been sitting here for that long. We don't know. I'm gonna let you put that back on, Derek. The, the ignition <laughs> He's system, on the distributor now. He's the got ignition it. system is now yours. <laughs> Give her a second to dry off. I just want to note the uh, the level of corrosion on these wires. Oh, that is pretty bad. So we'll uh we'll see if this works. If it doesn't run very good, we know where to look. I've got the magic goo. Someone want to go hit the go button? Dylan, you go ahead. I'm standing back. I don't trust these. Motors. I'm gonna make. Sure, I'm gonna not be in front of it in case it's not in park. Ready? Yep. Well, this is gonna be an easy day on this end. Try her again. Oh, there's that. There's that Mopar starter. That's. <laughs> All right, hang on, Dylan. Let's wait for the train. That's dead. It looks like a hornet met up with a fly. Anyway, don't break cleaner, none of the paint, please God no, please God what, no. What? I almost threw up. What paint? <laughs> that paint. Here's what we'll do. I'm gonna throw it up in the air and then I'm gonna skeet shoot them out. Derek, you might want to move. The wind's going that way. Pull! Oh, he's done. Legitimately, can we talk about what that was? I don't know what that was. If you I know, know what I that was in the comments, if you're a bugologist, or whatever the hell they're called, let us know. Should we be concerned for our lives? Go ahead. She want choke? Is it, did you stop when you let off the key? Ready? Yeah. It's, it if quits. I rock the key. So when you let off the key, it quits running. That's you the ballast. Get, ballast right yeah. If you got the ballast with you, that I bet you that'll that'll make it actually run. I don't have the ballast with me. I also don't have my multimeter. I just realized. Can it's you to be uh, at home. bypass my multimeter? You can just. It'll send a little more voltage to the. Uh, so what we're dealing with right now, at least on a Ford, the way they're wired is you have two posts on the side of your solenoid, your battery post, and then one two. S and I is what they're labeled. They're start and ignition. When you crank, this one's energized and it closes your solenoid. And then the ignition wire receives 12 volts to run your coil while you're cranking. So what's happening is while you're cranking, you have a battery draw, you lose voltage, but your coil will remain at 12 volts because it has that secondary source. Now, as soon as you let off the key, that solenoid opens back up and your ignition is fed through a second source elsewhere from the key through a ballast resistor which drops it to nine volts and then it feeds the coil. What's happening is as soon as Derek or Dylan let off that key, the ignition cuts out and it dies. So we could replace that ballast resistor, bypass that ballast resistor. Yeah, actually this is a 12 volt external resistor required. So the coil, the coil is the correct one. I've seen that if you say internally regulated or internally resisted, it's I've seen that cause problems. But I could also just put a wire from there to there and we could be done. So, we will 
see what we can come up with here and get this sucker to run. I don't have my multimeter to just check continuity, so I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way. And use a test light here. That looks grounded. Shove that there. Shove this here. Put that there. All right, so our ballast resistor is good. Oh, oh, yeah, they're both good. So it's either that plug or this myriad of wiring debacle right here. Let's, uh, let's do this a little. There we go. Is our key currently on? Uh, so, with the key I'll on... here there's ignition going. There's a lot of slop in it, too. Yeah, you know, that could be another reason. It, the, the turn signal, uh, the, uh, the turn cylinder on the lock, it could be bad. Okay, that mean, because there's a lot so, of play in here? Yeah. Give me a second. Twist that key around. We'll see if... Oh, I got the tiniest bit of light right now. Now? Yeah, uh, twist it around a bit. Oh, hang on, do that again. Now it's on. Slowly roll back. Okay. Keep going. Right before it goes off, it flashes brighter. Yeah, so that's that, when I was rocking it. Yeah. When I rock it back, before it's off, is when it was firing. Yeah. Well. So right there is brighter? Uh, no, not yet. Right there, there, okay. <laughs> so where are you at right there? So that's ignition on. Um, how do we just cross that's the solenoid? An eighth of an inch back from full turn. Pretty much horizontal. In, right in, in, right in, right there. There's your on. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we got tunes. I don't want to break his dash pad. <laughs> huh. So since this is just going to be turning on and off while we're going on the road, we're just going to hot wire it. Zing. You want to stab it into the uh, ballast resistor? Hey, okay, that's how we're going to hot wire him. Let's crank her again. Let's see if she'll run. Ready? Yep. <laughs> No fuel out of our mechanical pump yet, so, yay. So, we didn't see anything come out of the tank, at least on the fuel line. We're gonna disconnect this metal line right here, if I could ever make it work, and just disconnect everything from the pump side, running the external tank right here with an electric pump. Because if that tank has anything inside of it, first thing it's gonna do is spray everywhere on hot exhaust. We don't want that. All right, let me pull it out of there. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Hey, this is a good clamp. I'm keeping it. Oh, our freshly smashed gas can, thanks to Luke's butt. Um, damn AC's in the way. <laughs> he needs it. Wow, that was like. I'm telling you, these inner like, fenders are perfect for this external gas tank. It's like it was meant to be. They knew this was going to happen. They knew. Yeah, your gas tank's gonna rust off, so you're gonna want someone to put a bucket up front. Okay. So what we did, Derek and I had actually taken and rerouted our fuel line over all the heater hoses so we can actually see when things go wrong. And honestly, I don't see why the factory didn't do it that way from the beginning. It's even got the right bends in it. <laughs> I think they meant to do that. They put it on wrong is what it is, and we fixed it. Well, we need a power source for our fuel, and we know our headlights work. So I'm gonna unplug these headlights and shove a bunch of wires in them. All right, go ahead, sir. Ready? Yep. Now we will have a little voltage draw, but we don't care. It works. Great. So let's um, let's bleed our fuel line here. Go ahead, turn that back on. Otherwise, our likely stuffed needle and seed are just gonna not let fuel come up. So one thing I don't know is if the red wire is actually positive and the black one's actually negative. Oh. It might be going the wrong way. Yep, I think she's wired backwards. Let's try this. Of course, the black is red and the red is black. Ugh. It's a Mopar. Yeah, that sounds that better. Sounds and off. Oh, oh that, that did not look. That's no, that's fresh fuel we just put in. Oh, that looks like varnish. Yeah, it's just fresh old fuel. It's got ethanol in it. <laughs> Alright, go ahead. Let's see uh, how bad our floats are stuffed. 
I hear it filling. Of course you can't get to the dang thing. Is this our vent? Yes. Well, I do say... I don't want to fill it up too much. It might work. I think it, it's like good. Anything? I don't think so. I'll give a little more if you want. Yeah, go ahead. I think she's full and the, and the needle and seat work. The pump like started bypassing. Let's give her a crank, I guess. Our accelerator pump doesn't move, that's why. Oh. It's seized. Oh, I just thought of something. When you crank the headlights turn off. Okay. Yeah. Oh our ignition's not on. That's what it is. Oh. This will probably help. Go ahead, Dylan. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, All right. Well, I've seen this movie before. Uh, it's going to be another case of the van where it's full of like goo in the bottom, and everything seized beyond belief. All right. I'll get a screwdriver. We'll pop the top of this off and see if we can get those main jets to flow some fuel again. It's just sticky stuff. Oh, still. that's not even bolted down. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, the carburetor's loose. Vacuum leak. <laughs> just a little one. That oh, gasket yeah, broke. Need a break on that side. Yeah. I might can save it over here. No kidding. That is disgusting. <laughs> this uh, thermatic choke thing over here, or whatever you want to call it, actually moves. There's a bimetal spring in here that as it heats up with the exhaust crossover this will change where your choke sits. And this one actually still functions. I have never seen that before. Usually they're completely rusted in half or obliterated. How much to drink it? Um, I, I'll give you a Mopar. Fair enough. It's not worth it. Take wow, a look at, look that. at that. Get that in the sunlight. How nasty that is full of rust in the bottom of the bowl there. Look at this. Oh wow. Is this on fire? Might have been. I think it was on fire. It's all like burned. See how nasty this stuff is. That's why our uh, main jets won't flow anything. Or anything honestly. It won't flow anything. That's where our accelerator pump was sitting. All that gummed up in the bottom is holding still. Alright. Snip these jets out of here. These look fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. It's all wrong with that. Yeah, I think it's just it might be a little lean. It's just down a jet side. They're supposed to be blocked off, right? Wow. You want to take the bottom plate off, too? Uh, nah. You can just get the jets unblocked. I think that's fine. Well, we need to blow. Yeah, we need to make sure it blows out the venturis. Yeah. Spray pretty good. All sorts of sediment. My gas tank sitting for a long time. The gas just breaks down, turns to varnish. Have to get something to run through the jet if we can. They're both toast. Found some picks. We gotta had them. I don't know what size these jets were, but I know what size they're gonna be. Not that big. Hey, you see through it now. That was our problem. 
So we got a carburetor gasket from O'Reilly's and there's a lot of good parts in it that we got excited about. And we're basically going to redo this carb the rest of the way here on the tailgate. I'm going to get this float off and pop in the needle and seat here, but this pin doodabby thingy is stuck in here. So well, there it comes. I think we'd be better off putting the gasket on the top. I think so. Oh, got her. Sweet. All right, there it is. That's a pretty much fully rebuilt car, minus the whole cleaning everything part. So we'll uh, bolt this all together and slap her on. Well, we got a new gasket to replace that melted burnt one. There, going to drop that carb on there. Perfect. There we go. That's a that's a carb rebuild. Let's turn our headlights on and fill it with fuel. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, we got a little leak already, but that's fine. A little bit seeping out right here. All right. Yeah, that's good enough. All right. Let's try and see if this sucker will run. Okay, Dylan. Oh, we can accelerate here. Yeah. <laughs> a little tunage. Oh, I go again? We're going to get ready. Yeah, go ahead. You give it a little idle. You might go now. I don't see any blatantly obvious vacuum leaks right off the Oh jeez. Oh Okay, well Turn the speed turner off, Dylan. We're gonna get a timing light because our distributor does this. Oh, great. <laughs> We're just gonna tune it by ear so we can get this sucker done and move on to the boat. Go ahead, Derek. I'll give her the good one. <laughs> Might have to get it a little warmer. Go ahead. I can't. Oh, hang on. We're missing a plug. That's what's going on. Not as bad as the gun. Doesn't want to idle there, but nah, we'll deal with that later. All right, let's lock her down. Let's make this way. Your way to tickle. There you go. There's gotta be two gallons in there. Maybe three. There you go, you're to the bottom of the expansion tank. Call it a win. Good job. All right, should we try her again? Yeah, this time we're gonna run it in neutral just okay. to engage the pump on the transmission because a lot of these old Chrysler's, if they sit a long time, all that fluid will settle right down in the bottom of the pan. And you try to rev it up and, and drive to make it go, you're slipping all those clutches to dry. So we want to engage that pump in neutral, let it spin over for a little while, and hopefully when we pull it down in gear, it should go forward. If not, we have problems. Alright, <laughs> every single fuse is blown. The horn is blown. The ignition is blown. Heater was blown. Wait, if the ignition is blown, how did our key work? No idea. What the hell? Oh, that's ignition accessory. 
Oh. That's that's why the blower motor won't work either. I bet because yeah, the accessory has to be activated. Are there more fuses? Yeah, he's, there's a whole uh, glove box full Watch of fuses. Your eyes, you crazy bastard. Here. Okay, there's a bug again. He smacked me in the eye. Watch this. Now let's see. No. No. Can I get a refund? <laughs> So dropping it in neutral engages the pump, and that's when we realize that, hey, this transmission actually has zero in there. I mean, it shows a little bit in park, but as soon as it cycled all that fluid, nothing. So we'll probably have to add more than just one quart, but this will be the first one to at least see where we are. Shocks are intact, but I think they're shocked. Oh, they're so close. Can you give it a shove? Which oh. way? Uh, forward. Forward? Yep. Ready? No, the handle. Oh. oh. <laughs> 
Keep your white shirt that clean. Uh -huh. Like it's a quality of shirt, Kevin. <laughs> a little more air in the tires, a couple more under the wheels. with the accelerator pump just to make it keep running. Yeah, it's getting worse. Yeah. Well, we've nothing but abused this truck since we've had it running after That's sitting true. for 12 years, so. I forgot to mention, this truck is on its way to Tennessee. If you want to see the videos of it get brought back to life and put back on the road the way it was meant to be, head over to Dylan McCool's channel where he's going to be doing just that. Good luck, Dylan. Have a safe drive. Lightning speed, extremely light. I think he's the guy that wouldn't necessarily... This is a garbage truck. Nobody wants it except me. It's ugly. Burn it. Anything.